Is it okay to let a baby cry? Does it hurt a baby to let them cry? How can you know when it's okay to let your baby cry? These are all common parenting questions, and today I'm going to answer them and hopefully put your mind at ease. Hi, I'm Holly McLean, the Mommy Answer Lady. I'm a certified parent educator, mom of nine, and author of the book and online course, How to Train Your Child to Behave. So take a moment right now and subscribe. The short answer is yes. Under appropriate circumstances, it is totally okay to let your baby cry, and no, crying itself does not hurt a baby. It's okay to let your baby cry, but only if all their needs are taken care of. I'll go over exactly and specifically what those needs are, and then you can rest easy that you are taking care of everything and can allow your child to cry if necessary without having parental anxiety and without causing your baby to become demanding. First thing to know is that your child will express needs and they will express wants. Just like any human being, they have both. You can determine which is which by checking off a list of their needs that you keep in your mind. Once those things are checked off the list, you will know they are expressing a want rather than a need. Then you can decide how to respond appropriately. You don't want your child to be demanding and their crying to be the mode by which they demand and you comply. Instead, you want them to rest in the fact that they are taken care of and not every time they cry, they will immediately get what they want. Sometimes what they want is not what's best for them. For instance, staying up in the middle of the night or wanting a dangerous object that they see and begin to reach for. Also, it's good to think preemptively. Make sure their needs are taken care of before they express the need. If you do this, your baby will be much less fussy and you won't have to worry that they are trying to tell you something that you don't understand. So let's go over the things you need to make sure are taken care of before it would be appropriate to allow them to cry for a period of time. Number one, they have plenty of attention. If your child has had eye-to-eye -eye contact with you, plenty of hugging, holding, rocking, cuddling, and some playtime too, and your child is starting to cry, say at bedtime for instance, you know that them seeking more holding or attention is not a need at this point, but a want. Sleep is what's best for them, and you know that. Now they don't know that. So do what is best and put them in bed. Or possibly it's not a bedtime, but you know you have to make their lunch or you have to do the laundry or whatever. That's what's best at this point. Do what's best and let them cry if you have to. I'll explain a little more about that in a minute. Number two, they have been fed and hydrated. If they've been fed recently and are on a regular routine of eating meals and snacks or breastfeeding as the case may be, then you know they are not hungry. Make sure they have had plenty of liquids also, so you don't have to worry about thirst either. Number three, they have been burped. If we're talking about a newborn or an infant, then we have to include this as something that they may need. Make sure that they are burped after breastfeeding or a bottle, or their crying may be an expression of needing air to be released from their tummy. Number four, they are not ill. If you have checked for a fever or other indications like rashes, runny nose or stuffy nose, etc., and this is not the case, you know the crying is not because of illness. If they do have a stuffy nose, they need to have that remedied or their crying could be about not being able to breathe properly when sleeping. Sometimes they could be teething. So you can remedy that with some baby pain medicines and a cold teething ring. But once you have given the remedy, they may need to cry a little while to calm down. Let them do it. Number five, they are dry and comfortable. Make sure they have a clean diaper and there is nothing poking them like a toy or something underneath them. If in the car, possibly the car straps are too tight and hurting them. Check to make sure there is nothing causing them pain. Once all five of these needs are taken care of and your baby is crying, it is probable that the crying is a want rather than a need. In that case, you should not allow your routine or schedule to be changed because your baby is being demanding. This is the time when you may have to let your baby cry for a while, and that's okay. Mostly this will happen at bedtime, but sometimes it happens during the day too. If it is time for your child to go to bed and they keep crying and you are wondering why, check these five things off your list. If all are taken care of, 
you need to take charge and let your baby know that they will have to go to sleep now. Or, if not a bedtime, maybe we'll have to entertain themselves with a toy or whatever while you are doing something else for the time being. Maybe you're working on cooking dinner or folding laundry or have an important phone call and need to get something done, but your baby's crying. Are all five things checked off the list? Plenty of attention for the day, fed and hydrated, burped, they're not ill, they are dry and comfortable. Then feel confident that it's okay for them to cry. In fact, if you have to, place them in another room in a safe place with a toy for a while so you can get that dinner in the oven or get that phone call completed. After you're finished, you can go check on them and bring them out with you into the common living area of the home. Don't let your baby rule your life. Instead, enjoy your time with them. Supply them with plenty of attention, food, safety, and comfort, and then don't worry about it if they cry sometimes. Crying is sometimes the means to learn they don't get everything they want all the time. Before you go, check out the next videos right here on these cards, and don't forget to comment below if you have any questions. Parents, you can do this. Thanks for watching.